भाकुनाली समस्या होने न लाये ब्रांडन रखी साथ ये ली आउन न सके कारण ली कर दारी रिकॉर्डिंग भाई बनी राम रोंग सब बनु बाकु था सो कौसले आप तो थी साइन होला आई रिकॉर्डिंग कर दारी ओके ला रिकॉर्डिंग सुनो बच्चों um, so today we'll talk about the association between stigma and mental health in the context of COVID-19. If we think about pre-COVID, um, this is kind of a pyramid of distress in the population. What we can see here is that um, most people day-to-day uh, -day, have minimal levels of distress. Um, there might be economic challenges from time to time, um, sometimes experiences of discrimination, sometimes difficulty with uh, family, child rearing, but most of that isn't clinical distress. Then we see people that live in more mild to moderate distress because of ongoing economic problems, social problems, of health problems. And then a very small percentage of the population lives in, in a state of clinical distress where they have a diagnosable mental illness, um, which requires treatment such as um, medications and or psychotherapy. But this has changed tremendously really throughout the entire world um, as a result of COVID. What we see now is there are fewer and fewer people who are actually living in a state of minimal distress because of disruptions to economic livelihoods, because of fear of getting the coronavirus, because of family members who have um, may have contracted the coronavirus, and potentially because of grief and loss because of losing a family member to coronavirus, more and more people around the world are living in a state of mild to moderate distress. And we've also seen many people who had kind of subacute clinical distress now going into the state of clinical distress where they have a diagnosable mental health problem and will need um, psychotherapy and medication. And these are just some of the different things we, we want to think about in terms of impact on mental health. So one is that because of discouraging people to go into hospitalization because of contracting coronavirus, more and more people who would have been treated in an inpatient setting now are being told to stay home. What we've seen are higher numbers of uh, suicides or people coming into the hospital after a suicide attempt, as opposed to seeking care before attempting suicide. So Jen and others in Nepal have shared with me some of the numbers of high suicide deaths recently in Nepal as well, uh, including suicides of health workers that we'll talk about in a few minutes. The other issue that's been a big challenge is the drug supply chains have been disrupted. So if someone had bipolar disorder, severe depression, um, a, psych a psychotic disorder such as schizophrenia, um, they may not be able to get the medications they need and that may exacerbate their symptoms. We've seen this, for example, in province four in our own work, um, some of the government offices um, shutting down supplies of psychiatric medications. And then, People who have mental illness may be in settings of greater transmission risk for coronavirus. Uh, a lot of the outbreaks here in the US have been in nursing homes where people might have dementia or um, geriatric depression. We've also seen concerns about um, inpatient psychiatric facilities and large psychiatric institutions such as a large psychiatric hospital here in Washington, DC that has had an outbreak. In addition, people who are homeless may be more likely to contract coronavirus. Uh, in the States, these are individuals who might often you know, live on subways or metros, um, which is a high area of transmission, or they live in poor quality, high density housing. So lots of risks to people with mental illness, um, both in terms of lack of mental health care and increased risk of contracting coronavirus. But we're all affected in some way. Um, for other people, economic and food insecurity, uh, increased social isolation, which increases stress levels. The social isolation actually reduces our ability to fight off viruses. There's actually changes in the inflammation and, and uh, immune pathways when we feel more socially isolated. Stigmatization of certain groups. There's also been a problem of increased interpersonal and child abuse um, in terms of people being at home, not getting the social supports they need 
to more kids experiencing maltreatment and neglect. And then, as I mentioned, grief and mourning, um, but often a disruption of typical practices, so we can't hold funerals like we used to. And then the lack of physical health care has been a major detriment to people's mental health as well. What's been so unfortunate about this experience has been the stigma that health workers in many parts of the world have felt. And I know from some of the questions that Sujen shared with me, that this has also happened in Nepal. So we've seen, in, seen places in the world like Mexico, Colombia, India, the Philippines, Australia, where neighbors don't want someone with the, who's a health worker uh, to be staying in that area. Um, their children may be stigmatized as well, not let into daycare or other, or other school programs. Um, so often people who are on the front lines of mental health are being um, harassed and in some cases even threatened with violence. In the US, we've seen this not only for frontline health workers, but also for public health workers. In, um, in Texas and Florida, public health workers who have worked at the state, uh, the state level have actually resigned because of threats to their life um, from people of, of different political backgrounds. And then this is obviously a picture from before lockdown. So, um, these are one of the few photos people aren't all wearing masks. But we've also seen um, a lot of issues related early on and continuing to specific groups being stigmatized. In the US, that's especially um, Asian Americans and East Asian Americans, people who are seen to be of, of Chinese descent. But as we know, um, it's not like somebody walking down the street in the US you're going to know clearly is Chinese or Korean or Nepali. So many individuals of any Asian ancestry have been stigmatized in parts of the US and around the world. I did a lot of work in uh, Liberia after the, the Ebola outbreak there. And so many of the things that we're seeing now echo the stigma that was experienced as a result of the Ebola outbreak. And one of the articles that I gave to Sujen to share with you all from Sierra Leone talks about community responses. But there's a really big difference between Ebola and coronavirus because coronavirus is actually transmitted much more easily. So in many cases, if you took some basic precautions, it was quite hard to contract Ebola from someone else, unless you in particular were a health worker or somebody who was involved in, in burials and taking care of the dead. But we know with coronavirus, it is much easier to translate, to, to transmit um, this condition. As many of you know, I've, I've spent um, more than two decades um, looking at mental health in Nepal. And in particular, I've been very interested in different ideas of how mental health affects the, the body, the heart mind, the brain mind. And this is also strongly tied to issues of stigmatization. So if we think in the US, um, often mental health is all kind of lumped together. But you can imagine that in Nepal, individuals who in particular are seen as unable to regulate their social behavior, their interaction with others, abiding by social norms, might be especially stigmatized. So someone might be, who might be depressed or anxious or worried might not be as stigmatized as someone who is seen as, I'm destigmatizing terms, right, pagal bolaha, uh, someone who might go out into the street and not take the appropriate precautions. Similarly, we can imagine individuals who are using lots of alcohol um, might be stigmatized because of the idea that they can't control or regulate their behavior. One of the positive things about the initial response was the recognition by groups such as UNICEF, the World Health Organization, the International Federation of Red Cross, IFRC, that stigma was going to be a problem. And they built their experiences also on what was seen with, with Ebola and very quickly released information to help educate the public about the risks of stigmatization and what should be done about that. An important thing from a mental health and stigma perspective is the idea of distinguishing social distance versus physical distance. So social distance is, is a scale that we commonly use for mental health research um, on stigma. I see one of my colleagues, uh, Manoj Dekal, is on this, uh, as well as I think Jitendra Rai, who worked on our project in Chitwan, 
And our main outcome there was a social distance scale to measure stigma. So when we're asking people to social distance, it's almost like we're asking people to stigmatize, which is why WHO has distinguished between physical distancing and social distancing. So physical distancing is still engaging with others, often in the idea of doing this remotely or at a, at a six foot uh, distance, but still being supportive and engaged with others. Social distance, that concept implies not wanting to interact in any way, even remotely with individuals. So WHO has strongly recommended that we try to use the terms physical distancing, but as many of you see, most governments are continuing to use the social distancing language, which in and of itself is encouraging stigma. So let's, let's take a moment to talk about what actually happens in the brain with regard to stigma and why we need to think about that in the current moment. So the important and kind of foremost aspect of this is that the brain is most likely to go into a stigmatizing mode when we feel threatened. So if someone is very anxious, if someone is very worried, if someone is very afraid, that's the time when we go into stigmatizing thinking. We can follow this for those of you that study some, some neuropsychology or neuroscience. When the amygdala is activated, because we feel like there's a threat in the environment, we go from kind of the, the slow thinking of the brain to the kind of the quick thinking of the brain, which uses stereotypes to make judgments. Um, one of the aspects of the brain that, that does this is called the insula, which is used to distinguish kind of us versus them thinking. So if we think about, a, for example, at the extreme, you know, a police officer who feels uh, afraid or threatened in some way, they're much more likely to stigmatize and stereotype people that they're going after than if somebody's relaxed and calm and maybe hanging out in the library or something like that. So we see that when people are afraid, they're much more likely to stigmatize. And that's so important in regards to coronavirus, COVID-19 in current times. We all feel more anxious, we all feel more afraid, so we're much more likely to go to stereotype thinking of kind of good versus bad people. Another thing about the research I've done with um, Manoj and, and other colleagues that are on the call here is to use something called the implicit association test. And this is a, a computerized tool that helps us to better understand our unconscious biases. This has been used a lot in the US to show that people associate black faces with guns and violence more so than white faces. I might say, you know, I'm a, I'm a college educated person, I'm a professor, I treat everybody equally, but I could take the implicit association test and realize that even I have racial uh, or, or bi uh, um, uh, biases, ethnic biases in some way. Um, another colleague, Sohar Arai in Nepal, has looked at this with regard to things like looking at, at Pahadi populations versus Madeshi populations or different types of, of uh, groups and shown that also there are implicit biases related to ethnicity and caste in Nepal. So even when a person feels like they're treating everybody equally, a part of the brain may still group people into categories. And the more threatened, the more afraid we become, the more likely we are to stigmatize. This is an important thing to think about in terms of what's being done at a public health level to help reduce fear and anxiety. We in the US are providing the best example of what not to do right now with our president actually trying to encourage stigmatization and stoking fear. So the more he makes the, the American people afraid, the more likely they are to stigmatize. The other thing to think about is stigma's not a mental illness in and of itself. Stigma is something that we all do. It's a normal function of normal brains. It's part of the classification that comes from our evolutionary history of living in groups and interacting with other groups. So if we wanna break this process down, first thing that happens in the brain is that we see differences in terms of some type of stigmatizing mark. That could be skin color, that could be dress, that could be gender, in health conditions in the past, that would be as a kind of a, 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 let's say something like leprosy, where you might have a, a visual signifier of it. Or in the very early days of uh, HIV, 
you saw a lot of stigma because of something called carposi sarcomas, or kind of these purplish spots on the skin. So in some cases, there might be a, a sign of the health problem, a racial and ethnic um, symbol in some way, or something now we're seeing is regard to who wears a mask and who doesn't wear a mask, and people might stigmatize based on that mark. Once that mark of difference is perceived, what happens in the brain is this categorization of, is this person with me or is this person against me? And again, that could be race, that could be caste, that could be anything, it could be mental health status in some way. Now in the US, what we're seeing is somebody who walks down the street and sees somebody else with a mask on, and if I'm wearing a mask, I'm like, that person's with me, I'm gonna feel comfortable with them. But if I see somebody walking down the street who doesn't have a mask on, I'm gonna feel more afraid of them because I think they have a different mentality. In the US, I might think they don't think that coronavirus is real. I might think that they're from the Republican Party or they support Trump. So it sends for me all of these signs of threat, um, which are more likely to make me stigmatize that person as opposed to treating them like an equal human being. In the brain, the part of the, the, the area that addresses that is called the dorsal anterior cingulate cortex. That's kind of the us versus them decision. And then the front of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, helps to either calm us and reduce that stigmatization and stereotyping, or it doesn't calm us and the amygdala is more active and we go into a threat response we are not, where we are not empathetic. So the more calm, relaxed, secure we feel, the more we can reduce the stigmatizing response, the more we're anxious and worried, the more the prefrontal cortex does not um, reduce that amygdala activation, and suddenly I see people as threats and I'm not empathetic or caring about them. And there are a whole host of threats that we'll get into from a, what's called a what matters most framework that are likely to trigger this. So one of the biggest threats, and often we think about in terms of, of mental illness, is the fear of violence, that somebody might be violent and so I'm threatened. But nowadays, the biggest threat that we're thinking about is a contagion threat, that I might catch something from somebody else. But it doesn't always have to be violence or contagion. It could be things like, I see that person as burdensome, especially in a healthcare setting. I see that person as immoral um, or of a different religious background, so that's a threat to me. I might see that person as potentially making me look bad in front of others, so it's called a subjective incompetence threat. Or it might be somebody who's of much higher status who could do something to me or tell me to do something and I couldn't respond or stand up for myself. So there are a whole range of different threats that start the system, not just fear of violence and contagion. So this is the model that was in the, one of the articles that Sujen shared that talks about how we use social neuroscience, social psychology, and theories from medical anthropology to tackle this stigma pathway and interrupt it, ultimately to try and increase our empathy and reduce stigmatization. In terms of mental health, we've done that successfully in Nepal using what's called social contact, getting people who have mental, um, who are in recovery from a mental illness, spending time with health workers or their community members, and the more they interact on a human to a human basis, the more we see that stigma reducing over time. But we can't do something like that in the context of coronavirus. So we need to step back and say, based on the different theories, what could be done in coronavirus time to reduce stigma. So an anthropological theory that complements the neuroscience is called What Matters Most, originally developed by the famous Harvard uh, medical anthropologist, Arthur Kleinman, and also by one of his mentees, uh, Larry Yang, at, the, at New York University. What Matters Most says that people ultimately stigmatize when the thing that is most important to them becomes threatened in some way. So for a parent, it might be people that put their children at risk, then I will respond in a stigmatizing way. For some individuals, it might be their religious identity and people that threaten their religion are most likely to be alarming and then I'm going to stigmatize against those people. It might be an economic matter, it might be a health matter, but everybody's gonna have a little bit of difference in terms of what matters most that we need to then understand to respond to, to reduce stigma. So if we think about COVID-19, there's a lot of what matters most on the table. 
So one is a fundamental survival threat. Although we're seeing over time that, that uh, mortality rates for middle-aged and younger people aren't incredibly high, there's still never a guarantee that even if you're 25 years old and you get COVID, it doesn't mean that you might not die from it as well. And we know that for individuals who are older, 50s, 60s, 70s, that there are very high mortality risks. So COVID threatens our life and the life of our family members. So that's clearly going to be something that can trigger a stigmatizing reaction. We've seen though that it's not only the survival threat, but also our fundamental livelihood is at risk. We've seen in our own department, many um, doctors and nurses actually being laid off during coronavirus um, because we're not taking care of other health conditions at the current time. Many people in different fields um, are losing their jobs or getting pay cuts. Another issue is a social role threat, the role that we play in society is being threatened because we can't go about our normal actions. And then also group membership threats. What we're seeing now is that if you don't kind of go along with everybody else in your group, you might be ostracized and stigmatized. So for example, in parts of the US like Texas, Florida, Arizona, if you wanted to wear a mask, often other people in your community, in your church, people that have the same political party would stigmatize you because they would say, you don't need to wear a mask, why are you wearing a mask? So taking uh, precautionary measures might actually lead to you being stigmatized from your group. So again, we need to be sensitive to the fact that what matters most can be very different for different people. That for a healthcare person, what matters most may be helping other people to reduce their, their suffering and to keep their, their health intact. And so we might take precautionary measures consistent with public health. But we also see in the US people whose faith is more important than their physical health. And they say, well, I would be okay dying as long as I you know, met my religious obligations. So many people, again, in certain parts of the US who have decided to not follow public health precautions in the name of being able to participate in their religious activities. And again, you know, it's not a situation of one is right or wrong. They're from different types of approaches. One is a, a public health approach and the other is a religious approach. And they may be different for different individuals. So this suggests that some of the recommendations being produced by the World Health Organization, UNICEF and others are a step in the right direction but that we probably need to go further. At a fundamental level, we want to avoid things like associating the, the virus with certain groups. And there's no better example of that than, than my current president, who even in a rally um, last week was still referring to this as Kung flu and the Chinese virus. So that is first and foremost, the basic minimum thing for not promoting stigma is to avoid that language. Um, but then we need to go on and think about how we can work in other settings as well. So this is a picture of a psychiatric facility in Uganda called Budabika Hospital. It was originally built uh, to hold about 500 patients with severe mental illness, but currently has a census of almost 900 because of overcrowding. And that was even before coronavirus. So the first thing is that people in these facilities may be more stigmatized than before because these are now being seen as sites of outbreaks. And so families may stigmatize a relative who's been to Budabiga and actually not accept them back into their homes after they've been discharged. Another factor, as I pointed out earlier, is we're seeing massive disruption in medication supplies. And so people who have mental illness may begin to show signs and symptoms again, which leads to them being stigmatized because they could, they could be seen as a super spreaders that aren't going to monitor their own behavior. What we're also seeing in many parts of the world is that poorer people who don't live in a situation where they can um, physically distance in the same way are getting stigmatized. So these are pictures mostly from uh, favelas in Brazil. And there you're seeing middle class and upper class people stigmatize even more than they did before against these individuals because of the idea that, well, even if they wanted the social physical distance, they couldn't in those settings that are overcrowded. And then of course, health workers. 
these are seen as individuals who on a day-to-day -day basis are being confronted um, with uh, the risk of getting coronavirus. So they and their families are being stigmatized against. So where do we go from here? Well, I wanna talk a little bit about many of the resources that are currently being used in Nepal at this moment, many of which were actually developed with input from um, colleagues in Nepal, and then go to um, not only the, the mental health response, but what we can do to reduce stigma. So as many of you on this call are aware of, there's the Interagency Standing Committee that has produced a number of materials over the years for humanitarian responses. There are some kind of generic ones. I know that Prakash Acharya um, has done a lot with this with the earthquake and now um, recently as well. And a number of other tools, psychological first aid and problem management plus. Now what's exciting is that these are rapidly being adapted for use in the COVID time with the idea of if we can use these tools to reduce distress, individuals maybe not only have higher quality of life, but also the more comfortable we feel, the less distressed we feel, the less we'll stigmatize. And by using these tools, it also provides an opportunity for an individual to manage their own behavior without having to go in and seek in-person care, such as in a psychiatric facility. A great resource, and I've seen a number of you already on this, is mhpss.net. Um, that has produced a number of recommendations related to uh, mental health in the COVID uh, response. So I wanted to share with you recommendations that some of you may have already seen from um, IASC, IFRC, and others about um, responding to mental health needs, including being aware of stigmatization. So here are about uh, six or seven key points from the IS reference group that came out at the very beginning of this. And the first thing that they prioritized was acknowledging that there's going to be stigmatization of people who have COVID-19 or uh, expected to have that. In addition, they recommend that the safer someone can feel, the better they're going to be able to respond. And this isn't important only from an infectious disease standpoint. It's also important because the more you have the protective equipment that you need, the less likely you are to stigmatize to others. For, and this is also gonna be important, say, for neighbors. So for example, if my neighbors think that when I go to the hospital, I've got my, my, sheet, my face shield on, I've got my two masks on, I'm wearing gloves, then they're gonna think, oh, Brandon's being safe, I don't have to worry you know, if he's next door, he's not going to spread something. But as we've seen, many health workers haven't had access to the personal protective equipment that they need, and that actually increases the risk that they are going to be stigmatized by their families and their neighbors. The thing of, well, I know that when Brandon goes to the hospital, the hospital doesn't even have enough masks. He's used, reusing the same mask week after week after week after week. So the more that those resources aren't available, the more there's going to be stigma. In addition, um, people are being stigmatized because of the stress associated with the higher work demands, whether you're a frontline worker, say in a grocery store or in a health setting or a police officer, that you're gonna experience more and more personal distress that may lead to others avoiding you. Those typical things that, that we would have had in the past to feel better, our social support, much of that is gone. There's less opportunity, say for physical exercise and other types of, of practices um, to help and do self-care. And then also, we really lack information about who's most at risk, who's most likely to die, and we still don't have a guarantee that, oh, as, as this person, we're guaranteed that you're safe from coronavirus. We even still lack information on who all develops an antibody response. So even if you've had COVID-19, there are concerns that if it actually wasn't severe enough, you might not have the antibodies to be immune to a second infection. IFRC has produced similar recommendations, really highlighting the need to remotely support others. So making sure that those are self-quarantined, get support, that the general population has access to information, that health workers and social welfare responders have uh, support and care. This is something that has come up as very important in Nepal with the recent suicides of, um, of health workers. 
In addition, that people who recovered, even though they recovered, they may still feel stigmatized. And then those who have lost someone to COVID-19. Caregivers and older adults are at especially high risk. And then also people who had prior vulnerabilities, prior health vulnerabilities or mental health vulnerabilities need to get care as well. Um, with remote PFA, the key things, the key messages that have been advocated here are find ways to be socially close while physically distant. So this is the idea of using WhatsApp, Viber, Zoom, whatever, FaceTime, whatever it may be to maintain your social relations, even if you're physically isolated maintaining a daily routine, even in quarantine, setting goals for the period that one is, is in lockdown and keeping active as much as possible, planning also time alone. This is especially hard for individuals that have low resource housing conditions where lots of people are crowded together to actually get time alone to feel well, trying to find humor even in difficult situations, promoting hope, and then using a range of, of stress management and acceptance and commitment techniques. And the key here really is that human contact is still vital, even if it's done in a remote fashion. IOM, and I know many of you have consulted with them in the past, has put out its own recommendations. And this has been especially challenging with a lot of the disruptions in travel. Uh, we had a colleague on one of our research studies who was stuck here in the States for more than three months and just made it back to Nepal a few days ago. Um, so it's not just refugees and asylum seekers, Many of us have been separated from, from friends and family because of travel restrictions, um, and that's been a major stressor on well being. And then thinking about individuals who had prior um, substance use risks um, or those who are developing new substance use risks. In some parts of the world, like my colleagues in South Africa, most of the places that sold uh, beer and other alcohol was shut down. Um, in many parts of the U.S., that did not happen. So people were able to be at home on quarantine and have regular access to alcohol, which might not need, lead to the most appropriate coping. And in the U.S., we've seen a back and forth on this with places like Texas, Arizona, and Florida opening up all the bars and now shutting down the bars. So people have kind of all of this, all of this alcohol access all of a sudden, binge drink, and then are cut off from alcohol again. And we know that there's risk of withdrawal. Um, so again, these are things that are not surprising for many of you. WHO um, very quickly put together a self-help guide on managing stress. Um, and I think this is one of the materials recently translated in, into Nepali as well. And then also the PFA guidelines um, were also very quickly uh, translated and disseminated. So another key resource and tool to use. And then I'm, I'm delighted sujen has been helping me connect with a number of uh, folks in, in Nepal where we're translating a new resource called EQUIP or Ensuring Quality and Psychological Support that is currently focusing on remote delivered care. Um, so three colleagues in the MH, MHPSS community in Nepal are currently working with myself and WHO to put together guidelines on appropriately doing remote care, uh, remote management of suicide risk, and how for all of you to supervise um, trainees and, and others and even non-specialists who are going to be shifting from in-person to remote care, which we think will unfortunately continue um, pretty far into the future. We won't be going back to all face-to-face -face care um, yet. All right, um, so I just wanna end with a few things. So one is uh, I think it's very important to realize the um, the, the need for local solutions. And there's been, at least from the US side, a lot of failure of kind of global uh, leadership. So in the US um, and even prior to coronavirus, we often said when it comes to mental health care, we are all developing countries. And that's very true for where, where I am right now. Um, we've seen a lot of challenges with government restrictions on being able to actually use telemental health services. And although some of those were lifted, um, they're trying to clamp down and prevent telepsychiatry again, which I think is a, is a huge mistake. In addition, um, we see that a lot of the practices in the U.S. have actually worse, worsened um, uh, stigmatization rather than, than reducing it. 
And what we've seen here, at least in the States, is lots of things about like, oh, go to this resource, go to that resource. So I've referred to this as kind of a pandemic of self-help advice, call this person, check this out, but actually a complete lack of a coordinated national mental health plan um, in response to COVID-19. And I just want to bring up uh, a couple of things that hopefully will contribute to our discussion as I end here. Um, this is a quote from the American poet Robert Frost. He said, good fences make good neighbors. In not all cases is that true, but I think that's an important thing to think about with regard to COVID-19. If we look at the figure on the left here, with the two green people, yellow and an orange person, and the lines in between them, actually there was less stigmatization going on when there was full lockdown. It kind of everybody was separated from everybody else. And although that was very challenging in many ways, it didn't lead to what's happening now in the US and many parts of the world, where as restrictions lift, we're spending more and more time only with the people that are like us and less time with the people that are different from us, whether that be based on caste, ethnicity, economics, employment, education, language, religion, and any other characteristic. So because of this, this state of threat, we're really retracting to kind of smaller social groups that are like us and not engaging with others. And I'm not promoting by any means kind of physical contact with everybody all around, but we need to think about how can we find ways to socially engage with diverse groups again and not just be around those that look like us in, in some way. And this I think is a big failure in the US with regard to um, not maintaining restrictions longer and now leading to a very uncoordinated opening where groups are beginning to get together, spread it amongst themselves because they feel comfortable. They say, hey, this person looks like me. And then they spread that to others as well. And at the same time, blame outside groups, whether that be based on ethnicity, where they live or other characteristics. So just six things to think about as we go forward and be happy to discuss. So the first is that we have to keep in mind that physical distancing and social distancing are very different things. And although we should continue to promote physical distancing, it's very important. That doesn't mean social isolation. And we need to find ways to connect with those that are isolated, including finding ways to associate with those who are socially isolated that might be different than us in some manner. The next is to not just make an assumption and say, well, stop stigmatizing. We have to understand why people stigmatize and what we can do to address that. So from a what matters most perspective, as opposed to looking at people in Texas and saying, oh my God, they're all so, so stupid. Um, you know, they should just listen to public health. It's understanding that for them, religion, in, as, as they express it, is very important. How can we find ways to work with religious leaders so that they can still practice their religion without having to violate public health codes? So how could we work with religious leaders in that? We did a lot of that in Liberia um, after Ebola to help religious leaders be able to play an important part, not only in religion, but also in public health. We need to make sure that we're engaging in myth busting, that we're addressing things such as, you know, uh, you can only catch uh, coronavirus from an Asian person or from a black person. That needs to be, be you know, totally quashed. We need to get away from the ideas of some of these superstitions about what can be done to prevent uh, coronavirus. So myth busting is very, very important. We need to work closely with health workers who are not only distressed um, because they themselves are being stigmatized, but also to help them to educate their patients who will likely experience stigma as well and give them some tools and techniques to address that. Similarly, as health workers to just discuss amongst ourselves why we are being stigmatized by whom, how that interacts with what matters most, and then find ways to respond. And then the last thing is that we have a generation of children that are growing up in this very um, unprecedented times. So to discuss not only COVID-19 with them, but, but stigma as well, to understand and help to, to lead them on the right path for behavior. And this is a nice book that the, that the um, IASC group has produced to help talk to kids about um, uh, coronavirus, I'm not sure if there's an Nepali version yet, um, but a whole number of, of uh, other languages, um, translations have been, been produced. But I also wanted to raise that that's an important thing 
because the behavior that we model gets echoed then by our children in society. And that's it. Um, so, there it is, and you are. So, about the Hami Trafalgar no Percha. Danuba, Brandon, uh, thank you very much. Um, topic of prostitute go laggy. Malaxa as a Hamru saw baggy root, Irizana, Nepaline Ununsa. एक तो इस आना विदेश बातों पर नहीं रजिस्टर करने बात हो ते कारण ले आऊँगे जी मैं अभी शुरू में आऊँगा रुक अब आमी छाव को तीर आमी लाख सों अब आपको आधा घंटा अथवा पंतालीस मिनट अब आम रो सर्वल इंटरेक्शन फर्स्ट होंगे सं सो वी विल बी गोइंग फॉर द डिस्कशन नाउ बिफोर वी मूव इनटू � recently uh, with um, some of the team members of uh, Nepalese Psychology Network, uh, Palista Tuladar and Deepsika Dangol is here. So uh, we have been looking into the media coverage of the news and articles related to mental health uh, during this uh, COVID-19. So we have noticed like there has been a very huge increase in the interest among the people regarding mental health. And there has been also a coverage about this uh, stigmatization issues uh, in Nepal. Like um, there was a very <clears throat> big case, like uh, the case of second positive COVID case in Nepal. And uh, in, in the mass media, like uh, the media itself involved in like uh, stigmatization. So uh, she has spoken out like, uh, you know, about these issues and uh, she has been like uh, actively engaging uh, with the public uh, on how to like uh, fight against this stigma. Um, yeah, so in my opinion, mass media has also played a can play a very important role uh, whether to increase or decrease the stigma. And among the public, I think um, now that we have access to the social media platforms like the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and several others. So sometimes um, the use of social media also like uh, leads to increase in the stigmatization. And not to mention in a country like Nepal, we already have like a traditional like um, uh, stigma issues like the menstrual st stigma, caste based stigma, or disability issues. So yeah, that's already existing, but uh, the burden of stigma has even increased now uh, with the COVID-19. Uh, okay, now, so we'll go into the discussion. Uh, so you can unmute and then ask the question you have for Brandon or you can even uh, share your thoughts uh, on this. Nepali ma swadha pani huncha. Hai, tabai lai Nepali ma swadha sajilu huncha bani chai. Tabai lai Nepali ma pani prasna swadha sakna huncha. Atwa tabai lai yu bishai ma aapne kye bhanai haru rakhna man lai ko chha bani. Tabai lai tiyo aapne bhanai pani rakhna sakna huncha. हेलो मैं बेबी साह बोल रही हूँ मैं लेते हैं कि क्वेश्चन सुनने जाएं वाले अब आइए जो क्वारेंटाइन बना कुछ हैं तो कभी गवर्नमेंट के स्कूल रुचा है ना अब बिस्तार गवर्नमेंट स्कूल ने क्रम में तो सोची रहा को अब बस्ता बनी जाती है लेकिन अच्छा इल्ल बाल वाली का और मैं एकदम ही प्रकार पस्त हम क्वारेंटाइन करें तो था तो है ना आमले तो तो वजन का ये बन बनने आमले तो 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 करें ना आह जिसने बाबी तो ये तो तेरे लागे तो ये बोल रहा है कि तो लाइक उसे भी एड्रेस कौन सा चीज़ तो लाइक इस तो फिर बॉडी रहा चुकी ये कहते तो ऑनलाइन टीचिंग ले गारोपनी बने रहा था है ना � आह स्टिग्मा को तो करा था छोड़ दिया तो हमारे एकदम रामशेदी दिन हुआ है ना ये लेकिन हमने कौन सी डिस्काउंट सकिंग चोला बनी होड़ा मलाई ओ ओ इस तरह से एकदम एकदम महत्वपूर्ण चाह सबाई संसार में आवत है इस तरह समस्या चाह अम 
Balbalika Harut Egdum Garocha, Kinabane, Tin Mina, Char Mina, Pach Mina, Chamina, Gar Dinbari Radbari Matrai Basne, any Abataki to school Matafarkum Parcha, that a Warukum Manma Derikura Keldaita. So I think Yote Kura, um, Abibaba Karulai, and Shikcha Karulai, Tio Manasik Swasta Kobarema, the Bujaunu Parcha. So Abahamro Mero Chora Chori Kolagi. Um, school ma mindfulness classes guard by cha. So waru the remote um, pad pad da keri um, derija so angreji derija so isab ani lagbak harak dwidin ma ek choti choto mindfulness session pani guard cha ani herao farke pachi school ma pani mindfulness activities to guard no parcha yute korao ani um, bua ama haru laite bujau no parcha. Eri Ratima Deri Chintacha Atawa Pisab Fercha Atawa Testecha Tio Tulo Sumasia China Tio Adjustment Phase Cha Tara Alikati Ke Baladmi Te Waru Sangate Milano Parcha Arko Kura Pani Sake Sama Schools Haru Bistare Kolnu Parcha Banale Eri Eka Choti Tio Let's say Ekjana Chora Te Tinmaina Aru Ekjana Matrai the Hario Bane Tara, school me ekachoti, and he sai jana, dui sai jana, tin sai jana, ekachoti betio bane, panic, panic to hunasapcha. Kisa by a kole, eri schools haru, la ye ye akdama, ye, let's say, sombar bihana, tishjana matraita amcha, sombar diuso arko tishjana, and he bistare bistare, sano class bata, tulo banaune, mahako portmacha. Arko kura, bane. To school ma basta kiri romailo association chaincha. The ajaboli mancheru dere chinta cha kina bane ramro na padeko dere samai bio ani ekdom fall behind bio ani tese bai kole waru ko itcha turunta i tio subjects ma focus karna parcha. Tare eri suruma arts ma atwa singing atwa tese kalko activities ma suru gario bane bistare bistare man haluka karna sapcha. Kespachi subjects here at Diandi in a subcho. There are Turuntai, Egdom Garo Kalko subjects, my Diandi Obane, Jun Chinta Town Sapcha. There are two pretio prasna to Egdom Egdom Mahako Pornacha. A whole at Bairuko Arco Vichar Panita, Tio Mero Afno Babna Matraisa. I know Arkutamalagi, Lagomot, directly at quarantine, ma, and in community people from Tangle Rakaweda. Can I still Halko Jockey? As some minimal abstractions, when you the recharge card with the noun, it must take two test to then you updately update by rats in a service to say available or update by rats in a such a counter to be if you got a hit to put around to the current grammar thing, cost of health to take away a paisa leer when knocking in a special case, take a boy of anything on quarantine. My boss, I could go to guideline, paisa not in one accurate. Until you got a hit, if them don't realize I still have to feel my ass, you got intent people left in the family life. And even gone for a salmon or day dinner for Japanese, start particular salmon, they didn't for Japanese, gone in our new origin. Hypercalculate, stigmata, stigma, with your door, funny wire, hypercalculate, stigma, never, only like one kind and gone for Japanese school available as a rumor, near one kind and gone for Japanese, you know, and Amelia Palma, even oil China, to waste in kind and our China. The exam body is to distance and maintain gunner Sakipa physical distance. Consuming <laughs> 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 Sound, uh, you are some 
हजर को जस्ते अस्त भर्खर एवं ठाव के कुरा आए हैं तो हेल्थ वर्कर एकजना प्रेग्नेंट महिला वहाँ को एकदम ब्लिडिंग अलग अप्ठारो भी भैर थी वहाँ टेस्ट कराने पर्ने पीसीआर टेस्ट कराने कराएन हेल्थ वर्कर ने नहीं हेन भाई कि हमी नहीं हेदि ना सा सुनसर के केस भर्खर केस हो छोड़ दून भाई तो महिला एकदम प्रेग्नेंट है उसमारी झन टेस्ट वहाँ को कन्फर्म भाग पीसीआर भी करा हो कि है राख तो राखा है वहाँ छूद सुन एवटा तो केस है अर्क डड़ेल दुरा सा डड़ेल दुरा में हो तैं क्वारेन्टाइन में जाने पानी को पानी को मुहान ही बंद कर दे गाँवली हमें फैलि तस्त केस अमी ये डिस्कसन कर स्टिंग में भाई कुछ तो पैला अगि भन्न भाई नहीं हजार पैला सदै हो संसार में नहीं होनी मैं मेरे प्रश्न के हजार जस्तु एक्सपर्ट लो स्टिंग में सदै हो यो डिजास्टर के बेला में अलग बढ़ झन बढ़ है तस्त को लगी हम तत्काल के कर सकता अगर हजार के भन्न भाई स्टिंग में तो केस जैसे हेल्थ वर्कर केस में तो हेल्थ वर्कर ने महिला ने नहेरे केस में के करने तो हेल्थ वर्कर भाई कुछ आए थे कि हजूले भाई अनुसार तो हेल्थ वर्कर को एंजाइटी घटना हमें काम करो उ ओरिएंटेशन करो उ सिक्योर फील कराने पे है एक भन्न भर तो अवस्था में मैंने वाला छेन कारण ये बेला में हाउ टू डील अथवा भन डेल दा कति कम्युनिटी मानसे कसरी भन्ने कि झन सेफ क्वारेन्टाइन में सेफ फैलिदेन इसलिए सिक्योर करा भाई कसरी आज भोलि फाइले देखी तर को बेला में एकदम बढ़ा आइले नेपाल में विभिन्न खाल को संस्था अलग अधिकार में सहयोग बनाल जिससे महिला अधिकार अथवा जनजाति अधिकार अथवा जिससे दलित अधिकार जिससे खाल को संस्था थी सो आज बोली ये डिस्क्रिमिनेशन हुआ खेल कुने अर्क संस्था जिससे कोविड रिस्क्रिमिनेशन को बारे में कुर कर सहयोग क्योंकि यूएस में आज बोली लाइक एन एन डबल ए सी पी नेशनल एसोसिएसन फर एडवांसमेंट अफ कलर्ड पीपल थी तस्ते एथनिक माइनोरिटीज में थी सांस्ट कोविड होने भाई पाए उन्नी अदालत के लॉसुट्स गो धर सहयोग गो सो आज बोली कोरोना को केसेस में चैंपियनिंग सहयोग गाद सो ने खास्तो छो महिला अधिकार की गरीबी मन को कमजोर आर्थिक स्थिति मन को अधिकार ये खाल को संस्था को सहयोग कि नाता Every woman has the right to reproductive health care, prenatal care, because they call for um, advocacy to to change that, right? माइंडफुलनेस एक्सरसाइज माइंडफुलनेसरसाइजर कर बाल बालिक को माइंडफुलनेस मूजन संग हजर कंचन जी तो बाल बालिका संबंधी सामग्री नेपाली में अनुवादित भैस एमएचपी एस एस डट डेट में बच्चा सब कसरी कुरा करने भाई में उपलब्ध छ्रांडन ने देखने भाग पलिस्ता एवं दुटा हाथ पी उठे देखे पलिस्ता ने कई प्रश्न सो नमस्ते 
uh, I had a question um, uh, regarding uh, solu the solution focus thinking scale. I use it uh, for my research paper in my college gra uh, graduate thesis. So I wanted to ask if uh, this particular scale can be used to address stigmatization. Sure. So I'm not familiar specifically with the solution focused thinking scale. I do use solution focused therapy. Um, that's something Sujan and I have actually chatted a lot about uh, in the past. Um, so th there's a lot of different ways that we can understand stigma. Um, but what I like a lot, least about solution focused therapy is the idea of identifying what needs to be changed or modified or addressed in some way to know that things are better. And the same thing could be used with regard to stigma. So an, a difficult thing for people who are stigmatized is to figure out what would my life look like if I weren't stigmatized. So Kalanka Lautsana stigma na baeko bae mero jibanta kastocha. So that but if if they could think about that and say, well, I would be able to do this at work or this at school is my family, then we can work towards changing those behaviors. If we just say, you know, stop stigma, but we're not trying to change specific behaviors, it's not going to work. So when we do stigmatization with health workers, we talk about how much time you spend with them, what kind of questions you ask them, do you listen to them, do you also check out their physical health. So all of that is very focused on a behavioral change. So I think a solution focused approach to say what do you want changed can help guide any programs better than just saying la look stigma <laughs> just stop stigma. Okay. If you only say that, it's not going to be effective. Does that answer your question, Polly? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Rashtra, Rashtra Baili Baal, Adho Thonu Baal, Chai, Mo Walai, Aakno Prasna Rakhno Mo Nando Parsu. Rashtra, Mo, a medical doctor, I am interested in psychiatry, pursuing my for the degree in psychiatry. So I just wanted to ask something. As you said, Trump lay or Trump lay certain Kuraru Bonnie, President Trump lay about mask and other things in his speech. Likewise, it a parallel to Nepal Napani Amro, Prime Minister Oli Lee, he says stuff like Besar Kai Boniti Kunsa, Amro, Avani Swatsa, Pahar Nagar, Tokinsa, Ni Aunsa, Onitesale Gorda Amro, Immunity Body Sa Bonnera. I see my patients and when they come to me, like educated people are masters gone bako like Ambro immunity is to so of a mask on is to put out my emphasis they could pay my day. My day counseling gone to cause because it politically, socially, all the Kotimati position my boss, they go man chile, bonico speech they go down key, media co influence they go down key. It's very difficult to convince them. So I was just thinking, like, if the causal t causal they can research methods hockey, this like effect causal effect pare ko because of their speech, this is happening more. Bani rathe like quantify causal ko ni ra. What is the solution to this so that I can just deal with my patients and convince them beautifully? Bani me ro question. Oh, it it it. Eddie Malay, ye prasna ko lagi jawab bio bane matas sabai sansar ko samasya ta samadan ganu sakshu. Um, right. This is so. Our hamro kam eti garocha kine bane hamro neta haru ekdom he murka ko kora bande cha. Um, so one of the things to think about are is is the use of other um authority figures to be able to challenge when these myths are propagated. So in the US, we've been very disappointed because the Centers for Disease Control hasn't really challenged Trump at all, which is what their job is supposed to be. But the National Institute of Health, which is more research-based, and Dr. Anthony Fauci have been 
a voice to say, well, actually, this is the evidence. And then also relying upon getting journalists access and understanding of a lot of these reports as it's coming out. So when the, the um, hydroxychloroquine results came out, that it was causing more harm than good, we tried to get as many journalists to cover it and to understand what a randomized controlled trial means and why this is, this is a problem. Similarly, educating journalists about accuracy of tests. Um, so Jen, uh, Nandarazacharya, a number of the folks here have worked with me in the past about developing appropriate tools in Nepal. And we always say, you know, this tool doesn't totally predict who has depression and who, who doesn't. It has this kind of sensitivity and this specificity or this accuracy. We've used that same understanding in understanding the, the coronavirus tests to explain to a health worker, you know, a diabetes test, a mental health test, a um, tuberculosis test, they all have things like false positives and false negatives. It doesn't mean the test is broken, but you have to educate journalists about it. So I think the two most important things for you as a, as a health worker, Rastriji, is to one, are there any advocates who can be voice of reason in the Nepal Medical Association or TUTH Dean or something like that? I know it's political <laughs> to speak against the prime minister, maybe not. But then talking to journalists, you know, in, in Kantipur, in the, you know, in the news channels, on social media, here's how you understand these studies. Here's what this means medically. Here's why getting the tests is still good. Here's why, you know, turmeric and hydroxychloroquine aren't going to, to cure this. But yeah, working with journalists and trying to find an advocate in a politically powerful position. Tiksha, you're the Thank you so much. Prakash, to take a Next question, Prakash. Hello, Topic so early, Sano, as a Prakash, Ali to Lobo Hello? 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 Uh, namaste. Ma Prakash Acharya. Aile ma UNICEF ma kang varsu. Brandon, tawale ba nuva ko pura maal kete experience share karna malaiyogi. Yo tawale agi to threat ko pura karna baat hi It's social role threat and survival threat bande pura ro. Yaha chay kosto de dekhi aile chay ma province two Janakpur ma chhu ra yo province two lai represent karsu. Yo eastern tarai. Yaha chay kosto dekhi chay ma bande kari yo threat ko pura karna kari. Kind of positive. Quarantine <laughs> You say kind of your threat to Kuralipani, Eliza contributes for Solas and social role threat or survival threat for Nuni. The listening for Solas is the lago. Now, Orko Kuraz is the village and stigma like dress Gurnakura, but the Kerisai myth boosting Kukuraru Gonavatani. This must say Alikati, Alikati, you Kurana Kosari Banani, Kunkun Kurava as a transmit on such as the Polapalese, Almonium, Iron, I know, it was even a year about a transmit on Savan, the Kurava say. यो either myth or fact or thas in aina, two crowds. The other thing, you could have a little bit of clarify or make a little material, a little bit of a which is really good. And third, I like the value of social neuroscience model. One of the things that I do is 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 that I do can you just give a little bit example on it? It's my question. Thank you. Hasta Prakash ji, Danibad, namaste. Koranagarako deri bayo. No, to buy Guru, it's a ectum ramacha. So, Hami stigma ko barima bichar gardakari. 
yute kore te chutaunu parcha yute te ke um pakka pakka ko threat ani um ke let's say stigma threat right so um uh, pilot uh, like hiv hiv ko belama hamile tatio tio bodily fluids marfa transmit garden sapcha you you actual threat pakka threat that a hug garden tio teste teste garden hanche garden kisma sietena right so the stigma is the non real threat whereas the actual threat hamikisma the stigma hoina so we know that coronavirus can be transmitted in close proximity just through speaking and the the air droplets that is real pakka ko threat right that's that is not a a myth so when we talk about peril and um and contagion so peril banale violence jagaragarne contagion sarua right so when we talk about that it's more the idea of i can get coronavirus from any chinese person right tio tio nakali threat right not real right that's the gullet gullet kalko threat but i can get coronavirus if i speak closely with someone who has it that is a real threat anitisma to gullet anitik chutaunu parcha so myth busting myth busting mahamita bancho that you know if you are speaking closely with someone who has coronavirus you can catch it tara edi tyo manche coronavirus na baiko tyo manche chinese ki african american ki teste kalko tara coronavirus na baiko sangai basne kuragarne ki farak china right that's that's one of the the things so you want to distinguish between real threats and fake threats ajaboli right many parts of the the us they think oh only if you're around a chinese person could you get coronavirus you got it huina right but they don't realize that maybe they're afno manche you know chachemeki haru uh seto koko manche tara unia rupa to the coronavirus to kuna sapcha ani saru kuna sapcha so that's why in in stigma education what are the real disease threats and what are stigmatizing threats tiksha Prasta sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Prasta ko prasta ko tera just lagyo ay. Abo mo novin sir lai. No novin sir lai prasta sir ba nubasa. Abo wala ako prasta ra ako nubasa prasta. Hello Brandon. Namaste. Ah, mo novin. Amira awas sunin sir prasta sir ga. Prasta. Azur sunin sir. Oh, thank you. Mala ali kiti ali kiti abo interesting lai stigmatized chinko kura garnu parda kiti. Jaste ali abo abo Nepal ko kura garnu parda kiti jaste caste based stigmatization parents ha. It's very strongly rooted and ekdam hi jaste abo ali kiti generation ma dakhiri asti bar kiti tetro thulo dil ka tapadi kati ho. Ekdam rukum paachi ko kura garnu dakhiri. Abo yo stigmatization abo yo COVID nineteen ko perspective bada una saksa yo front liner ko kushta una sakla. अथवा चाहिँ जो जुन अब विदेशबाट आएको हाम्रो दाजुभाइ दिदी अनि बहिनीहरूलाई पनि हुन सक्छ अब मलाई यसो जिज्ञासा लागेको चाहिँ भाइ माइ क्वेरी चाहिँ के छ यो अब यो कोभिड नाइन्टिन को पर्सपेक्टिभबाट लागेको त्यो स्टिकमाटाइजेसन त्यो स्ट्रङली रुटेड हुन्छ कि जस्ट भने अब आज स्टिकमाटाइजेसन होला फेरि यो मे बी दुई तिन दिनमा फेरि त्यो चेन्ज हुन्छ कि मेरो चाहिँ अलिकति माइ क्वेरिज तपाईँको अनुभवमा कस्तो छ लाग्छ यो So you're asking, do you do you think that this stigma will be short-lived, or that there lamos atwa COVID by pati lamos may matiste tito na sabcha? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is this strongly rooted, or is just only temporary? Okay. Or why? Just that. But as the stigmatization goes, thoughts so many. Maybe more than that. I'm not sure. So I just I want to. Yeah. 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 So um, ek tam ek tam ramro pras na ek tam mahapupor na kora. um so right so lots of overlap between ex- pre-existing stigma caste based stigma uh asti sujen le mala yo to um blog uh patano bio to um hey the untouchable virus like the uh ki maharajan 
Lilek Nubayo, Ekdom, Ekdom Ramro Vlog, Ekdom Well Written. Um, so if politicians or even health workers use coronavirus to worsen pre-existing stigma, coronavirus kind of roke pachi, kyo arko stigma lamo samayma te kese te garna sakcha. Udara han kolagi ajaboli US ma Trump Chinese kumache haru te birod ma te dere gardai cha. And I think coronavirus samosia samadangare pachi lamo samayma anti-Chinese US ma te stigma haru te cha. So politicians can worsen pre-existing stigma and then lamo samayma kese garna sakcha. You to udara han kolagi Haiti ma, Haiti ma tio kalara kosmosia baiko, earthquake ma, buikampa ma, kispachi kalara ayo. Ani, tio Haiti, ani Dominican Republic, yote, yote island ma cha. Ani, Dominican government le banako, sabay jana Haitian manche ko kalara te cha. Ani kalara kosmosia roke pachi, aile sama, Dominican Republic ma, Haitian manche haru ko tulo, aparo tulo discrimination cha. Ani aile sama ajaboli health workers haruta banja e kyo Haitian manche hamro clinic ma na na leone kine banay kalara te sarua garna sakja pero ajaboli kalara te taina right so I think stigma that gets worse now lamo samay mata asak te kuna sakja. Brandon, ma isma so Susan ji isma so disula isma ali panu ni aja. हाँ एकदम शॉट मार अली बानो वैन जो हैशन आरु हैशन आरु मार जो तो इस यो उन आरु मार क्लोर सभी हैशन मार क्लोर रहा था बने रहा जो गवर्नमेंट ले बानी होते स्पेशल कर उन लोगों मेंटल में सेटअप बॉय बानो वैन है ये बायोलॉजिकली ऐड दाखिली बायोलॉजिकली ऐड दाखिली हम लोग ब्रेन ले कौन से फंक्शंस जैसे एंजियर अंगे वन वाले डोर्सल एंजियर कॉर्टेक्स को काम योड़ा हो वाई ना और कुछ इन तीतू डिजास्टर के बेला में तो 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 पार्टले अली डीपली लिंच की इन द इनफॉरमेशन देश को लाइट आउट कर लाइन की कौन सा शख्स योड़ा आज ले हो 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 ठीक ठीक ठी हमरो दिमाग में एकदम जंगारो कॉल को के याद के समझाना तेज़ देखा को तो तूने सकला। The more distressed we are, the more catecholamines going up into the brain, the stronger that memory is. So Eddie, Eddie आज बोली हम ये हमरो चिंता चा केचा 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 एकदम आप थारो लग देखेरी अने ट्रंप इन टेलीविजन में आओने अने बने यो चाइनीज को गलत चा जो एकदम बोलियो कॉल को एसोसिएशन चा साधारण कॉल को दिन क्रोना ना बाय को दिन मेरो जीवन ठीक है चा अने ट्रंप बंचा चाइनीज मांचे टेस्ट है चा क्या फर्क चाइना तो आज बोली हम हम रोज सबाई तो अलग अति आसाजीलो बाय को ले ये स्टेक कॉल साके सामा हमी राष्ट्रीय तक को पूरा जिस्ताय साके सामा हमी the newspapers अनि political leaders संगा तो काम गार्नु पार्चा किसे कोरे तब बंद गार्नु पार्चा वानी पसे यो ट्रंप में अलग ही तो उसमें ही प्रॉब्लम देखी होए ना अपने प्रॉब्लम से उल्लेख शेयर करे सबे मास माफ़लो करे और मास क्या पनी ती प्रॉब्लम बाको मैन चले तिला पिकअप करे रा तेसर from himself, he's a mentally disturbed, so he he tried. Yes, yes, my friend. Oh, ani af af no dar baikole, af no ke personality disorder baikole. Usko af no dimag ma ekdom biswas lagcha ke se baikole se jile file out karcha. Oh, dar naram rosti thi, naram rosta. Unsa ita? Bibo one eight one eight ko aadmi the kuchh aur wale aapnu naam mobile ko naam. Ani sujan mero mero six minute matray baaki cha ani the the jano parcha. Hey unsa? Hello hello. Azur suni rasu azur banu. Azur ma ma onis just kathmandu bada. Azur actually orda question sa ma inis me banu sala. Unsa? Brandon na. Uh, since these days, children are engaged in online classes, you know, they need technologies 
tools which most of the children are not able to afford. We had come across a news that a child committed suicide because he could not afford a mobile phone and internet. The situation of COVID-19 challenge is probably. How can we mitigate such possible future risks? Can I ask one more time? Just um, met to So in the U.S., people have tried to address this by saying the school system should make sure that every child has access to loaner technology, your mobile phone dine at the tablet dine, any remote teaching gario bane. So school system ko Jimmy Wari Cha. Um, but it is not happening everywhere, right? It is very, very difficult sometimes to get that access to everyone. And people are investing less in giving resources to these programs. So Hamile Tacha, US government ma like USAID, any foreign development um, you know, donations, ectum gafio, and even within the the US philanthropy. But we need to say now philanthropy is more important than ever, especially for children's education. So Ajiboli Sano Sano Foundation, Jacobs Foundation, uh, but we must raise the issue that these children's mental health their educational development is vital for the future of society. So Ajaboli is ailate dinu parcha because people are saying coronavirus smosias roke pachi hami soya garchal pratyo dilocha. Coronavirus smos samadan garda kari ra hami educational needs pani address garnu parcha ekachoti the garnu parcha atawa dilo bayobane just this smosia the ferry hunasacho. So I'm Maf Karnasi. I'm I'm Matajano Parcha. Afno Afno Bacha the Heruno Parcha. But Unsa Unsa Brandon to pelai deri deri dauni baat. Saath saathi aaj yo webinar ma aidi nu baat. Sabhi jana saw bagi arlay. Deri deri dauni baat sa. Ki saath eli hatu thau nu baat yo prasna arpan chhan manu baat yo tar Maf Karno la aili samay. Sakhi Karan Ligor there and you were not Sakino, Topile, Brandon Lai email Gorna Saknunza, Kurakani Gorna Saknunza, Terri Terri, Dandibat Brandon, as a Topile, you stigma, Egdomoile, Egdomi Motukuna, Bisay, you Raiko Soil, you Covid nineteen to some Ima, or Oily Amrio, Salval Mabani, Kuraki Ivani, the Rick's communication or Egdom clearly Uni, I know, Kikura say, Kikura Golot. त्यो कुराहरु मान्छेलाई राम्रोसँग हामीले छुटाउन सहयोग गर्यौं भने पक्कै पनि त्यसले चाहिँ स्टिग्मा घटाउनलाई महत्त्वपूर्ण भूमिका खेल्न सक्छ। अम र तपाईको पेपर रिसिप सम्बन्धी पनि एकदमै राम्रो छ। म तपाईहरुलाई त्यो पेपर पनि यदि हेर्नु भएको छैन भने हेर्नु हुन अनुरोध गर्न चाहन्छु। त्यसमा स्टिग्मा रिडक्सनको कम्पोनेन्ट्सहरु इन्टरभेन्सन कसरी गर्न सकिन्छ भनेर राम्रोसँग ब्रान्डनले लेख्नु भएको छ। अब म तपाईहरुलाई एउटा सर्वे फिडब्याक सर्वेको लागि एउटा लिंक पनि पठाइदिन्छु तपाईहरुले त्यसमा कस्तो लाग्यो त्यो फिडब्याकहरु हामीलाई दिनु होला धेरै लामो छैन एक दुई मिनेट लाग्न सक्छ र यति भन्दै म आजको यो कार्यक्रम नि अन्त गर्न चाहन्छु र आगामी दुई हप्तापछि हामी अर्को वेबिनार माइग्रेसन र मेन्टल हेल्थ सम्बन्धी गर्दै छौ त्यसमा पनि तपाईहरु आउनुहुन्छ भनी आशा गर्दछु हस्त नमस्ते Bye bye. So we done alive. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Banda. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.